It's Monday morning and day three of the Scotties here in Red Deer, Alberta. We have two games on the ice and four incredible teams going head to head. Today, a new week begins at the Scotties here in Red Deer. And this morning, four of the top contenders hit the ice. Amber Holland and her Team Canada squad hook up with another former champion, BC's Kelly Scott. And the hometown favorites from Alberta face another test, this time against Tracy Horgan and a rookie team from Ontario. Just two games on tap, but no shortage of talents. It's a reason to love Monday morning. Draw six at the Scotties starts now. It is a great morning to be on the ice here in Red Deer as some youngsters warm up outside. We are in Red Deer, Alberta, right in between both Calgary and Edmonton. And speaking of number one in ice, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, former Red Deer Rebel, first overall draft pick in the NHL. He played for the Rebels right here at the Centrium. He now, of course, plays with the Edmonton Oilers. And speaking of number one, well, there's two teams still in the running for that. Now, originally, we were going to show you one feature matchup, but we had to change our mind last minute, and this is exactly why. We take it back to draw five last night. Team Canada, Amber Holland, taking on Heather Nedowin from Alberta. Final stone. And the Canadian champion, the defending champion, needing a big shot, playing the in-off for the win and place it to perfection as Team Canada remains perfect with a 6-5 victory over Heather Nedowin. Meantime, British Columbia's Kelly Scott in tough against this young Ontario team. She had to also battle back in this one. Final stone in 10. The draw for three. Needs this in order to stay perfect herself. She has the backing. She has the weight. She's got the four foot and she's got three. As Kelly Scott pulls off a 9-8 victory. And yeah, Kelly, sigh of relief for sure as she also remains perfect. And here's a look at the standings. Team Canada 3-0, BC 3-0, Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan at 2-1. And, and in tough so far, Nova Scotia, Heather Smith, Daisy still looking for win number one. As we bring in now Kathy Goche with us. And Kathy, a lot of talk about Team Canada and Amber Holland coming in. Was she actually the favorite? Well, last year she went 9-2. and two. We know what happened there against Jennifer Jones in the final. And Amber Holland has been very solid so far in this year's Scotties. Well, Amber Holland has last night a 91%. You saw that great shot. She needs more from her team. This is a team that won $900 cumulative on the circuit this year. It is tough as Team Canada because you don't work towards the playdowns, but they're here. It's time to play big. And another one of the favorites obviously has to be Kelly Scott. She's a two-time national champion. She's a former world champion. She has a new look to her lineup as well. She is one of the favorites for sure, Kathy, but you feel she has to adjust things maybe just a little bit. I think she has to go back to what made her so good, made her win a world championship years ago. Always had a reputation of being a conservative player. She got herself into so much trouble last night. It's affecting her confidence 69%. She missed some tough ones, but she also missed some easy ones. So we got a couple of former national champions on the ice this morning. Two games, lots on the line. We'll keep you up to date all morning long. First Rock next from Red Deer. The 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Cashmere Bathroom Tissue. Nothing feels like cashmere. The 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by World Financial Group. Proud to be a sponsor of the Season of Champions. Your dreams, our strategies. By Tim Horton's new lattes made with premium espresso. And by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And here's a look at the two matchups on the ice this morning. Ontario taking on Alberta. And then our feature matchup. A couple of former Canadian champions, British Columbia, Team Canada on Sheet C. We'll keep you up to date on both, obviously, throughout the morning. And there are the handshakes as we get ready to kick things off. A couple of former champs going head to head. It's time to meet the teams. It's brought to you by Ford. Drive one. Hi, I'm Kelly Scott, the skip of Team British Columbia. Our lead is Jackie Armstrong. 
Second is Daylene Sievertson. Our third is Sasha Carter, and we curl out of the Kelowna Curling Club. Hi, I'm Amber Holland, Skip from Team Canada. Our lead is Heather Kalinchuk. Our second is Tammy Schneider. Our third is Kim Schneider, and we curl out of the Kronal Curling Club in Kronal, Saskatchewan. So the battle of two 3 no teams begins this morning. There's the Rock Cutters, BC, throwing the Red Stones. Team Canada, the Yellow Stones, British Columbia also has the hammer. And to start us off this morning, it's lead for Team Canada, Heather Kalinchuk. You see the numbers for Heather, certainly not where she would like to be. We're deep We're if it doesn't curl. Sit. Good, Heather. And that came down a lot. Right. The team feeling right out of her hand that and she was very deep. And. Clean. Hard, hard, hard. Clean. And. Yep. Yep, yep. Kathy, two teams with a lot of experience. Let's have a look at the game plan. Well, we talked in the opening about what Kelly needs to do. Go to the traditional game plan. Bail your team out early, and that will build your confidence and your consistency. That's what they're struggling with right now. Team Canada played very well in the last four ends last night, but they have to play the full 10 ends. Start faster and maintain that patience. You can see it on their face. They've had a frustrating year, but this is a very good team that has worked very hard. Be patient with yourselves, and the results will show. And the game plan is brought to you by World Financial Group. Your dreams, our strategies. And the shooter remains for Jackie Armstrong. I got 9593. Yeah. Okay. And a half. Yeah. Amber is usually very comfortable with a more wide open strategy, and that may in fact help Kelly Scott this morning get back to a more balanced approach. Lots of rocks in play last night. And she said to me before the game that she sort of feels that she's working with two thirds now, Brian, because she's got Sasha Carter who throws third stones, but she's got Daylene who holds the broom in the house in the absence of Gina Schrader for many, many years. It's It's been a bit of a learning curve. She feels they're about halfway in terms of a development plan to feeling like they've kind of done it all. And it takes time when you have a new team. That is fifth, Sherry Fraser, who's into the game. Nice one, Cher. Sasha Carter is off this morning. And there's another change, again, for Kelly to continue to deal with. Sasha is pregnant, expecting her second child, and it could be just an early morning. Are they going to balance when she plays or flu? We're not sure. Good ten. Two. To guard. <laughs> Sherry, a long time skip out of the BC yeah, like area, so not a stranger, has been here before. I still think you're three you five. Got lots. <laughs> Good chair. And it's tough for Sherry Fraser coming in here. She has not played yet. 
in this event. And so where the other players have a feel for the ice, she's been watching it. She certainly knows the tactics of her team, but this is the first time out here. Here's a look at Kim Schneider for Team Canada. I don't know if you're ever superstitious, Kathy, when you played, but if you'll notice, I talked with Kim yesterday. Straight hair today, ponytail today, not going to change it at all, she tells me, until they lose. So they take their superstitions pretty seriously. Curlers are funny that way. I think everybody definitely has their own. Hey, sweet ladies. Hi, girl. Nice weight. Remember, we parked in... 2005 in the same spot every day at the arena and I remember saying to our driver if we came around the corner the morning of the finals and somebody was in our spot they had to have them towed because it was just such a big deal was that for the patch too or just for the parking uh, no that was just to play the game <laughs> okay <laughs> so a pretty wide open first end here continues between Thank BC you. and Team Canada Nine and a half. And we just got a, an updated report that Sasha was up all night, Clean. not yep. well. On it. And being time. pregnant on top of that makes it really tough. Whenever you have a large number of teams together, we see at Olympic Villages, somebody gets sick, it does tend to sort of run through teams because you're spending so much time together. So, Sash, we hope you're feeling last much better. Was your last. And now we get our first look at Dalene Sievertson. Who will hold the broom for Kelly Scott and in this game throwing third stones? Very successful junior player. And has thrown third rocks earlier in the year for Kelly. So this isn't completely foreign with her both throwing and holding the broom in the house. Her first Scotties, but really has not looked out of place. Also a former BC junior champion. I was reading an article about this team, and her nickname is Youngblood. And she calls her teammates the old mares, which is her words, not mine. But obviously, it's that same story about how youth can come into a team that's been together a long time and really bring that energy. And I think that's the one great thing about the youth and the experience coming together for a great product. I absolutely agree with you, and so does Kelly Scott. That was one of the things that she said yesterday. She's not anywhere near the point of feeling like coming to the Scotties is sort of rote. She's very excited, but it's also in as much as she misses Gina, she did say that it, when you have somebody new, it's, it's a different experience, and it does rejuvenate you. I throw, I throw. I don't know if you got that one, but nice shot. Good chance first thing here in the morning for the teams to see the ice. Kathy, did you have a preference for the morning games, late games, afternoon games, or did it matter to you at all? It, it really doesn't matter. You know that you're going to have a number. It's harder to get up in the morning, obviously, <laughs> but the Just ice is always the best in the morning. It is crisper. It is the coolest in the building, so you will get the most consistency as you will compared to any other draw. So if you were looking for great curling ice, this was the draw to play on. Came up nicely, like so, yeah. Finish. Yeah, just four hard one. Yeah. My first time was nine and a half. Thank you. You throw the same thing then? Yeah, same thing. Okay. Got to get across. Yep. Okay. Here you go. As Amber settles into the hack, as promised, we will keep you up to date all morning long on the other game in action, Ontario, Alberta. First in action, there you see the situation. Ontario, the Red Stones, Alberta, the Yellow Stones. Looks to be that Heather Netherwin is shot rock there on the button. And her final stone here in one. She is indeed shot, Brian. This is a draw for two, but it's a really tricky one. You can see that she has to get around those guards and then has to hope it's going to warp to the hearts. Ontario coming in with that two and run record. Tracy Horgan, the Scotty's rookie. The whole team, Scotty's rookies. Will this bend in time? 
Extra few inches, not quite enough. So it will be just one for Alberta as Heather Nedewin has the advantage early on. I'll tell you what, Heather Nedewin has made some fantastic shots so far. She has. Great support behind her here in Red Deer. Of course, she won a World Junior title in the city. And in our feature matchup, the hitting continues. Last rock here for Kelly Scott looking for the blank. And for Kelly, even a nose hit will be yeah. fine. It's out in the wings, and hard, half hard, of it hard, is in. Hard, 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 do it. hard, 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 go, 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 go. hard, 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 hard. Way to go. And she'll bang it on the nose. So no damage done yet in our feature matchup between Team Canada and BC as Kelly Scott maintains that hammer. Want to win a two-year lease on a 2012 Ford Focus S? You can log on to fordhotshots.curling.ca and test your online curling skills. And for every participant at this year's Scotties, they also had a chance to win a lease on this 2012 Ford Focus Titanium by testing their on-ice curling skills. The final, a battle of skips. Newfoundland's Heather Strong against Northwest Territories Yukon's Terry Galusha. And thanks to shots like this, the hit and stick right to the button. Galusha is your winner, winning a two-year lease on a 2012 Ford Focus Titanium. Don't forget to log on to FordHotShots.Curling.ca for your chance to win. And just like Terry Galusha, you too could drive away in a brand new Ford. Carrie Galusha and her team thus far, two and two of this year's Scotties in these two squads, both perfect thus far and no scoring as Kelly Scott made the blank in the first end. We are locked up at zeros with action underway here in the second. First rock from Team Canada sliding a little bit deep behind that T-line, so good move by Kelly Scott to just ignore it and throw the corner guard, but now that there are two in the house, we'll ask Jackie to remove and perhaps roll behind that corner guard that she threw in her first. Good throws, Heather. Yeah. Great judge, hey? Nine and a half. Amber? Yeah. I think I'm good here. Go, Jam. Soft. One and thing that is very consistent is that these turns, both yes. in-turn and out-turn, will move a lot. Yes. And so if you underthrow the weight anticipated by the broom, which they feel that she did, it will move on you, and that's exactly what happened. And so this gives the get-out-of-jail-free card. 10 yeah. Yeah. Ten five. Yeah. If you're just joining us, yeah. fifth yeah. Sherry Fraser is in for right. Sasha oh. Carter today. And you talk yeah. about lineup changes, Kathy. I know that... Team Galusha, great start at two and two, and they came in with a game plan to actually alternate their lineup every single game, which is great if that's your plan going in. What is your thought, though, on the chemistry and that decision to go forth that way? You know, it really has to be a mindset. It is so European to do that. They, they've done that for years where they trade off the front end. I would have a very hard time with that. Um, I want to play. You know, yeah. I, I, you work really hard, and I think that there is something great about chemistry amongst four people. You know how each other works, and you work really hard to figure out how to bring the best out of each of your teammates. And if you add an extra person, and you're the cheerleader on the team, and you happen to be off that game, then maybe that role is not being played out. And so I understand why teams do it. Um, for me personally, I'm, I'm just not the hugest fan. I want to play. Just to it. Close. Clean Just it. to 
Does she want to freeze here, Kathy, or just straight berry? She would like to get around there. If she's able to freeze, she's fine. She doesn't have to, but the biggest thing is to lock this on if it's not going to curl, which it isn't, and that's just a weight thing. And again, we're cutting nice Sherry some slack first thing this morning because she is stepping in for an ill. Sasha Carter has not had the advantage of three games as the rest of the teams have. But that was certainly an opportunity that BC was not able to capitalize on. And so a little bit of chances for both teams so far here early on this Monday morning. That yellow stone belonging to Team yeah, Canada guys. so far back in the house. Really For Kelly Scott, this is all about getting around the guard, being in front, hard, somewhere buried. Hard, Just hard, 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 any bounce? Yeah. Uh, barely. Okay. Daylene struggling so far this week. She is tied for 11th amongst all second throwers, and so now moving up today to play third. Yeah. That can also make things a little bit more tough. Yep. Whichever. Um, can I give you the same I gave you last in? Yep. Is that yep. 84, 85? Yep. Well, Team Canada now in a pretty good position to at least either try put the heat on or force Kelly Scott to take a one a here in the second wide. end. Yeah, she's wait out a little there a bit. bit. Needs to move, Four Tammy. Four five. Whoa, Tammy. Just cleaning. Oh. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. And this one will need to slow down okay. to catch the rings. It'll settle between back eight, back 12. And again, a reminder that okay, with this yeah. cold air, eight, though, so yeah. that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. a little bit of discussion. Rocks do slide farther first thing in the morning. Yeah. Okay, I think so. Same yes. of course, no stranger when it comes to the big game. She actually lost the national junior championship to Rachel Holman in 2010 and of course Rachel had a great Scotties yes. and a great experience and it was a young Tracy Horgan now getting her chance here at the Scotties Rachel one of the teams she beat to come out of Ontario hard to stay on no great weight I mean and that is just a bit of a communication issue they were going hard to freeze down to that yellow stone Probably the easiest. Yeah. Just walk. We had good line halfway mm. down, but just big finish. Nice weight. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. Well, that's fine. Just playing devil's advocate, Kathy. Was yeah. there ever a chance to maybe to get out of trouble? You want to keep that hammer, obviously. Maybe try a double, try to get over there and make that shot, or what was your thoughts on the strategy call? I think it's a, a great call. Okay. Kelly's got last rock. She's trying to generate two points, and those rocks really are not a threat at all to her, those Team Canada stones, because they're at the back of the house. If you move both of those stones up about four feet, and they were on the center line and the eight foot, well, now you might see something like that because they're in a dangerous position. But for Kelly Scott, it's about finding a way to score two, not one. She's pretty comfortable with where those Team Canada stones are. Even a hit and stick here just creates a wall that she can use. Okay, well then go hard for the wall. Too late. A little that way, Heather. Okay. okay. There's your wall. We mentioned off the top, defending champ Amber Holland had a great year last year. She was 9-2 in the round robin. Off to a great start here. And knocking off Alberta, obviously great for the confidence as well. One of the better teams here for sure. And a good start. And this is the time of year. You and I talked to Merv the other night. 
And, you know, he was very honest. You asked him, do you think your team is the top one going in? He didn't even hesitate. He just said, no, there's no chance. He, he's very pragmatic. So is this team, Canada team. They know they've not had a great year, but all of that just becomes completely irrelevant when you come into this event. Everything that you've done this year, other than the experiences and the routines and the winning and the losing, disappears. This is all about what have you done today and what will you do tomorrow? And so far, Team Canada, as you say, Brian, perfect. Well, if you ever had a chance to chat with Amber Holland, she is a bit of a character, and she says what's on her mind, and I'd question her too as well. And I know she's been asked the question a thousand times, do you think you're the favorite? And she said, well, one of them. And I asked her, well, do you think you're one of the best teams here? She says, one of them. <laughs> but kind of with that smirk and tongue-in-cheek uh, smile that she has and her trademark smile. So regardless of, of what's happened, their playdowns, as you said, start now, and they're obviously very confident. They have the experience, and if Amber gets in the role like she got on last season, they will certainly be a team to be reckoned with. Tough pick either way, though, hey? Yeah. Great student of the game. Not sure I like the freeze, though. Pick it out this way. Yeah, Even if you clip this Yeah, but if I clip that, I'm down in there, too. I think you explained the outturn. Like, I can't clip it to there. Right. Like, if I'm picking it, I'm picking it that way. Let's do it, I don't know what you like. Whatever you like. Feel. Feel? Let's yeah. go. They're playing this way. The challenge is if you go this way, that yellow stone on the yes, right hand side of the center line is higher. No, we like this. And that makes yeah, the jam yeah. much more yeah, likely. Good. As you look at this from an overhead, it looks like there's lots of space, but there's last. not. And a live look over on sheet B, right next to our feature game. There is a look at young Tracy Horgan, Scotty's rookie, Team Ontario, final stone. Heather Nettawood and Team Alberta has a yellow rock top 12 partially buried so forcing her to draw here for her one in our sheet amber playing the pick okay no brush to it yet and an early mistake for team canada meantime there you see one for ontario they're tied up at one after two well that is a mistake right. by amber yeah I thought I threw it pretty good. Yeah, you did. And I think she did too. She throws a lot of rotation on her stones. When she plays appeal, she's able to throw that big weight. And we have seen them not move at all. This goes by the outside. So for Kelly Scott, a chance to throw the same shot twice. That's the dream shot. Final stone here for Kelly Scott. Out of BC, she was 7-2 in the round robin. Lost the 1-2 game to Marla Mallett, beat Kelly Law, beat Mallett again. And once again, on the national stage here, final stone into drawing for her pair. Right to T, line's perfect. Really quick, that was 14 and a half between the hogs. That's showing you how much this Brock is sliding this morning. Nicely done. And a high five as the former world champion has her draw weight down early and a 2-0 advantage over Team Canada. <laughs> Kelly Scott picking up two in the second end for a 2-0 advantage and it's time for the key shot, Kathy. Well, it came really early in this game and it was Kelly Scott's first one. There's a little wall building back. She tried to get some draws around the corner guard, wasn't able to, and Team Canada didn't really want to stick back there. But when Amber did, Kelly used the opportunity, tried to play the freeze. It's not a perfect freeze. And if it was, Amber would have had to have drawn. But instead, she really makes her think. And this is a really tough pick. You have to look at how to get it out. And so for Amber, overthrows it, misses, and that gives a chance for BC for two and that all-important confidence for Kelly Scott. And the key shot is brought to you by Scotty's Facial Tissue. Stylish designs for any room. So a 2-0 advantage here for BC at the Centrum in Red Deer. As action is underway here in the third end. And the hitting has begun. Well, so far Kelly playing a much more simple game. 
today. As I said, the degree of difficulty last night on some of her shots was very, very high, and there were tons of rocks in play. They were worried about shoulder checking the time clocks, and at one point had so many rocks in play and up three points. They let Ontario back in the game, and Ontario had chances to take it to them for sure. No need for that many rocks. The sisters, what a great opportunity to not only win Canada and compete in the Worlds, but to do that with your family. They had great stories here this week about mums and daughters playing together, PEI's team, Yukon Northwest Territories team, and no mom and daughter on this team, but two sisters, and that's really special as well. Here we go, Tam. Tammy's second place at 81% among seconds, so she's certainly doing her job. Only 1% out of that first place. It's not about finishing first. It just does tend to show you a consistency yep. at a position. Yep. Heather, a little bit. Good. Have a girl. And the hits keep coming here in the third end. Nine four. Perfect. Amber's not particularly concerned at this point. BC did take the deuce. There's lots of game left. And when there are good opportunities to go, she will. This is the patience that we talked about as being part of her game plan. She's very good at that. And when she gets out of that, which may have happened on the bonds build circuit this year, things did not always work well. They scrub all the way here on Daylene Siebertson's rock, gets a piece, and the shooter We'll hang on. Let's go, Kim. Well, Kathy, we talked earlier about the superstitions and Kim and, of course, the ponytail and the straight hair. I made the joke with Amber Hall, and I said, well, then, did you guys have a chance to go stay at Russ Howard's house for a few days to prepare for this thing? And if you don't know the backup story to that, after they won the Scotties in PEI, of course, bad weather got them stuck in Moncton. And of course, the Howard family nice enough to put the team up. And actually, the team thought it was pretty cool after they watched the final on TV again with Russ in the living room. So they got to give him a hard time on his commentary. But they said that was a pretty neat moment for all of them. Oh, for sure. How nice is that for this team after you win something as large as a Canadian championship to not be stuck in a hotel but in somebody's home and for Russ and Wendy to open up their home is just truly an indication of how great Wendy is. Eight, nine. She's a little bit yeah, we're still though. waiting for the invite from <laughs> Russ, so. Sorry, it's I'm good. trying to have to give that one a chance. No worries. Here, Amber? Yeah. Clean. Nine, two. Wall then. Clean's fine. Whoa. Whoa. Nine three. Okay. It's fine, Kim. And the shooter spills out. Nine three. I think this path would be the same as what she's doing. Went extra. Yeah, it was only nine three. It wasn't that bad. But the other one was ten. Yeah, but I thought that should come up. Yeah. In math terms, it is only 0.7 difference between a 9-3 and a 10. But on this ice, great analogy last night. I was talking to Eric Monford, one of uh, the key ice makers here, along with Dave Merklinger, and he was equating the ice in this building to a putt at the Masters. 
there's so much break in the green and if you have just a little bit more weight if you're a golfer it's going to run a completely different track than if you throw or if you throw in this case if you putt just enough to get it in the hole and that's what happens on this ice as well if you have a little bit more weight whether it's a bumper and you instead of back line the rocks run a different path and that's why she rolled out on that one without throwing a ton more weight Hey, Cal. You Here can you anticipate rocks will do very different things out here, and I like that. I like that about the ice. You have to throw it well, and you have to think all the time to play well here. That in turn is exactly the same as last end's in turn yeah. for speed. Yeah. Okay. Nine and a half. No, this is good. Yeah. Let's go. the shooter is there any strategy at all here Kathy about <laughs> drawing to a place that maybe Amber hasn't seen the ice here with a final stone for Kelly yeah. does it yeah. really matter at this point considering the, the level of talent yeah. these players have you could re you could go anywhere you're absolutely right Brian if they thought that there was a really bizarre path and sometimes in a curling club there will be a spot that you just can't get to and so you know if you throw it in a in a spot like that but out here really the reason that you go to the middle is that it is the longest distance to roll out which is what Amber Holland is going to want to do on her last rock and attempting to make the blank it's also another great opportunity for Kelly to Scott to find four foot weight which inevitably she will need this game That's good. And it looks like she has her draw weight down pretty good go. so far. Yeah. I thought I had a bit back eight on its own. Well, we Just, were off. Hey? Yeah, With I clean, think I think it would have been. Yeah. yeah. Kind of got some big curl coming in, so probably being right off. Good, yeah, good job. Yeah. There you go. Stone here in three for yeah, really hard. Amber Holland out of the Chrono Curling Club in Saskatchewan. Okay. Trying for the blank. All right. And looks like she'll hit it right in the nose. So a single One yellow. for Team Canada. Another slight mistake. BC has the hammer back. We're back after this. Two games underway this morning at the Centrium, and here is the other one that we're following. That would be Ontario taking on Alberta. Heather Nedowin out of the Savile Sports Centre in Edmonton coming in with a 1-2 and two record facing Tracy Horgan out of Ontario. And final stone here. She's drawing for a single up against three. Well, she is. The only good news for Heather is that those three stones that you can see are all in the 12-foot, so needs 8-foot. Put a clock on this, Brian. 15-6 between the hog lines. Any other time of the day, you have no shot of getting this here. But first thing in the morning, a cooler building, crisp ice conditions. Love this stone. So a single for Team Alberta. They lead 2-1 after three. And our standings on this Monday morning, Team Canada, BC, our feature game, both at 3-0. One of those teams obviously will suffer a loss this morning. Then Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan at 2-1. And, and a nice story early on. Kerry Galusha not only wins the hot shots, but a 2-2 two two start to this year's Scotties. As we bring you back to our feature game on Sheet C. Okay. And a 2-1 advantage for British Columbia. Amber Holland missing the blank with her final stone. She hit, stuck around, picked up the single. And now it is. BC with hammer back here in the fourth end. And a chance here for Jackie to get out of this. Heather 
Kalinchuk not coming in deep enough on her first one, and then her second one sliding in leaves a very good double opportunity. Which not only is made, but she gets that nice little roll in. If Kelly can get this out, which she can. Nice little roll in to bite the top of the house. Watch the shooter. Making the double. Gets a nice little spin. Bad break, but if Amber's able to get this out, not so bad. It's not 100% sharp That's yet quiet. this morning. Yeah. And again, you hear the discussion. It is so release weight sensitive, this ice. You have to be thinking all the time. Which is easier said than done, by the way. Well, well for one of us in the booth, certainly. <laughs> You're sticking around. Nice because get behind the corner guard. Right Stay with it, Jack. Four, four, right back, right back. <laughs> what is the ruling there, Kathy? Obviously, the opposition can sweep behind the T-line, but who has preference there? Who is allowed to address the rock? Well, it's your stone, so if you genuinely yeah. are sweeping it well, and not just trying to block, yeah. uh, you're welcome to continue to sweep it, and Amber can again. jump in as she did. Where it is less than politics, should we say, is if you're essentially blocking the other team from sweeping, and you're not. So in that case, they were really trying to get that yeah. back as yeah. far as they could. Yeah. All good. Hard. So if you're skipping against Russ Howard, you still want to get in there anyways and sweep because... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, a bad break there. Runs that stone back but stuffs it. And so for Kelly, we'll split the house and try to force play away from that one that's tucked behind the corner guard because it's deep. Would love Amber to have to hit out on the other side. So for Sherry, looking for eight foot. Certainly in front of the tee. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> Trying to bend. Curling big. 4-3. Pretty close to the scene. This is 4-4. Oh, yeah. a bit more, Jackie. Okay. Beauty share. We do share. share. <laughs> well, no double opportunity there. That stone Fair deep enough. in the yeah. house. Amber would like to roll over a little bit, try to get closer so that as this end continues to go on, the stones might be more grouped together and give an opportunity yep, for a double. Yep. Hard. Really hard. Hard, repeat. Hard. hard. Really hard. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. You never want to hear hard for just a piece and a flash for Team Canada. Just a little bit on a release. Came across the top. You cannot point or direct these stones to the target. And now a massive opportunity here for British Columbia, of course, with Hammer in the fourth end already. Two red stones in the house, and they're spread across the house. And now it's Daylene Sievertson. A chance to really put the heat on. really unfortunate. Is it in? <laughs> now both of those stones partially buried. This stone Bomb. behind this corner hey. guard more exposed for sure. With bumps you said? Yeah. Hey. Was that close to control that I just threw? No, I thought I thought it was fine. Okay. Up. Okay. 
is that for him? Maybe a hair. Back to back misses right, for Kim Schneider. Okay. So let's get a good one in there, top 12. And Kathy, you just talk about those little mistakes. And Seven, I mean, hindsight, you can do it all day, but Daylene puts that one rock in there, and now they're trying oh, to put four in the house with Hammer. It's huge. It really is. And in Kim's case, just in my opinion, on the first one really got it going and it took off and it's not going to be able to be held and on the second one just over through for what was asked for she was asked just to tap it back oh my goodness and they trade mistakes yet again ah. sorry girl that's a great tough one and that's still certainly usable for the scott team it acts as a guard and they can easily split that stone in but Is probably the call though, hey? I think so. Right here, probably. Kathy, it's obviously a team game, but when there's mistakes like that, me, man, you must be gritting your teeth at times. Well, and that's the biggest part of being a skip, in my opinion, is you have to be able to deal with the fact that your team may not like always come to, to play, and you have to be prepared to bail the them out. Through and kind of play the double. It's not in. Yeah. They're electing to play this way on this stone, and that's because okay, no, for any yeah, movement yeah, yeah. to the yeah. other side, you have to deal with that close redstone just thrown by Daylene, and you'd have to over curl. So this is playing down to the stone, probably from the hack Amber can't see either. And so you're throwing on Faith, certainly not the situation she wanted to be in without Last Rock already trailing. I'm pretty good. But yeah, this is the stuff, Brian, of why I never skipped. It's not about throwing the rock. It's about having to deal with the emotions of keeping yourself flat if your team's not playing. Kalinchuk and Schneider, a big scrub the entire way. Got to get it by that red stone. And they will bump. And now wide open for Kelly Scott. Great way. Yeah, just a little light, though, I think, for the ice I had. Well, and what a key thing. Great sweeping by the you hardly, you front end well, all the way out of her hand. The weight was yeah. really good. But Amber's such a tactician and understands the game so well. They're saying the weight's good. And she's saying, well, a little light for the broom that I took. So she knows why that rock did what it did. Kelly Scott with her first here in yeah, four. Yeah. And BC does have the hammer, a chance here Easy. Whoa, whoa. Easy. to lie no. a whole bunch. No, close, no, whoa, no, whoa, no, 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 no. Hit no, no, no. and a little flip behind cover. If she were able to stick out just a little bit and bite the eight foot, this freeze was not be there. So Kelly's okay with that, but would have been happy that if it didn't roll quite as far. Good throw. If it stops right there. Just about came up enough. Would have been perfect. Yeah, I know. It just rolled a hair too much. Yeah. And the other thing about being a skip, too, <laughs> despite all those mistakes, if Amber Holland can make an absolute pistol here, she can really bail her team out of some trouble. Well, she makes a lot of these. Needs a big save right now. Mine's pretty good. Five. You got room? He's right a little bit one. different. Okay. He's okay. Get over there. Okay. We're all to it. Mine's pretty good now. We don't want to go no, at all. We're heavy. Okay. Whoa, no, no. Oh, dear. What a misread. Great shot, Amber. Very nice. It's, I'm really curious about what's going on up there, Brian. You heard out of her hand the front end yelling, we have to go all the way. It's Get light. Go. It's a five. Then at the hog line, they said, oh, no, we're heavy, and it works out to be perfect. This is an experienced team. They read rocks really Great well. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it's just that crisp yeah, morning ice one. that rocks are carrying better. I don't know. I'm playing this, Do you think we'll get it enough? 
can you throw like a nine on it, do you think? Yeah. You have a fat half. I think you just kiss that, it's bouncing off of there. And you think just a nine? Eight, eight? Yep. Eight, eight, yeah. Okay. It's curling. <laughs> Let's go eight, eight. Okay. Once we're on it, we go. <laughs> you bet, yep. It's a really tough shot. That was well thrown by Amber. There's very little separation, and from the hack, she's only going to be able to see a half. A quarter would be ideal. Needs to hit it. They're talking about just a nine. I think you have to throw a little bit more than that. You want to hit it, because you're going to make contact with that back red one for sure. That's what she can see, not that much. So you're throwing right at the broom, not looking at the stone at all, and keeping that weight up. Kelly throws a lot of rotation. That will help as well. So after a few uncharacteristic misses here in the fourth end, Kelly Scott, final stone. A chance to take an advantage in this Monday morning match. Picks the yellow out, loses the shooter, but there are one and two for BC. As Kelly Scott gets her pair and now has a 4-1 advantage after four. Well, Kathy, some mistakes in that fourth end, but the Team Canada skipper did all she could. Well, I think both skips really demonstrated the other part of skipping, which is being able to park what your team has or has not done in the end. Final stone facing three could give up four if she doesn't make this well. Amber throws really good weight for the second shot in a row and almost freezes perfectly that stone. Gives her team a shot. Kelly's team decides that they're going to play the pick. Can only see a half from the hack. It's an area they haven't thrown big weight in yet this morning. Again, Kelly's team not making all the shots this end, but no mistake, another skip who sits in the hack and does what she needs to do. And that's pick the stone out. That back one's never sticking around, but you get your deuce and a three-point lead. And that's the situation now as action is underway here in the fifth end, a 4-1 advantage for Kelly Scott and Team British Columbia as Amber Holland and her team out of the Chrono Curling Club in Saskatchewan has the hammer back here in five. That's very good. Way to go. Nice shot. Yes, the nose is good. Okay. One other game on the ice this morning here at the Centuryman Red Deer, and it features Ontario and Alberta. Red Stones being fired by Tracy Horgan, the Scotties rookie, her final stone here and looks like she's up against one maybe two yellow stones of Heather Nettowin. Tough to say. It is tough to say and she has to be very careful that she doesn't top touch the yellow one at the top of the forefoot if it's not already second shot she can make it that way. Line getting really tight and they're just going to stop sweeping to try avoid that bump and now we'll see if it is one or two. Must have been pretty clear because there was no desire to measure. I'm going to wait for a signal. From Beth Iskew to the official. Just a chance, please. Yep, yep. Nobody's gesturing. <laughs> Help us out, people. All. Come on. Yep. <laughs> hard. Really hard. Do it. Hard. Go, go, go. Do it. We will, we'll update you. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah, sure. And it was indeed two. Go, so it's a. 4-1 advantage for Heather Nedwin as well. 85, I think. Over on Sheet B. There, I wasn't kidding. That's well, a big steal. But a very tough shot for Tracy Morgan. Line's pretty good. So Let Team Canada has there, their work cut out Line's here. Fine. We really All like you. to find a way to Time's score through. two, to go to the okay. break. Right only now. trailing by one and even more importantly for each of the players out here on this team Canada team really want to execute well this end and that one looks to be out of the rings in the back yeah it does to me too always tough to tell keep in mind with our camera angle sometimes because not often are we directly right over the rock, so sometimes there is some discrepancy when it comes to if it's in or if it's out. Yeah. 
And Sherry Fraser filling in today for British Columbia. Had a chance to play Sherry back in 1995 when she played with Marla Geiger representing British Columbia. She came back in 1997 with Kelly Owen who went on to become Kelly Law. So is not a rookie. But she certainly is this game because she's not had game time until now. Had a girl, Sherry. Let's go, Tam. There you go, Tammy. Yeah, I can play. Yeah. What do I need here? I think still like a 85, 90, 90, 90. As we talked about, Kathy, Team Canada did not go into playdowns as the other teams did, but they did spend some time in Edmonton at the National yeah, Training yeah. Center. And the one thing in talking with Coach Murph oh, Unger as well, right they it. really worked on their Fine sweeping. And at home, you may say, well, sweeping, what's the sweep? You put the broom down, you sweep. Oh, but there's a lot to it actually on the ice, right and it makes a big now. difference in just the way you sweep. Well, it certainly does. And one of the things that they've done is they've moved the transfer of their body weight so that more of their body and their head is directly over the broom and that gives you a better way of putting more pressure there's there's no debate i don't think that men tend to be stronger sweepers than women and that's a strength thing and it's a weight thing for the most part a lot of the women in this field are about 120 pounds there's a lot of really tiny women and so you're not going to exert the kind of pressure that you can but what you use as a technique makes all the difference in the world and so it's about they changed they went to close sweeping and so your your body is not open to the skip if you will your your forward shoulder is down absolutely and transferred their weight directly over the head of the broom and they really feel it's made a difference in their sweeping it is such a huge part of the game so many teams make so many great shots because of the sweepers. Oh, good sweeping, girls. And Daylene puts that one. Touching a button. Looks to be shot rock. Sherry and Jackie walking back. Watch that rock go sideways. It's coming right at you. That's a very nice shot. Yeah, it does does it look, Brian? Do looks you think? like a shot stone, you bet. Well, and more importantly for Team Canada with Last Rock, that scoring area is getting Not pretty bad. small. Three right now. We can look wait a Jamie. little bit. Five so close. Six. close line. Yeah, line. Hard line. We're short Hard line. Up. We're four. Come on. Hard, Hard line. line. Four. Uh, Hard. Well then. Slow then. Tick and roll. Tick and roll. Okay. And just short. So to our point, Kathy, we talked about the shoulders being opened or either closed and then having We're your power hand closer to the ice rather well, than the other one. You got it. And they're closed. And they flip the side that these two women used to sweep on, thinking that this is their power side. And so they're able to bring the rocks much further and put more pressure on the broom head by how they're positioned. We're going to line up that run at this point that front of the house is really closed off the scoring area is very small so she'll try to run the yellowstone directly back onto the red and at a minimum she's hoping that she's going to open so. up that side or you can peel the top one oh my God. i like I playing yellow. yellow okay you need there okay here here Probably here is okay. Okay. Oh, let's go. Let's go, Kim. Yep, yep. Yeah! Kim's 
Schneider trying to put a tough end behind her here. From that fourth end, big shot here for Team Canada. Really tough break because she grazes it enough that it redirects her stone, but not enough that she takes off, that top off. Top. Should have got off, I guess, and got the top. Well, thought we were by. Yeah. Um, was that one digging at all? No, no. it was just a no, it was kind of a drop. So no extra for weight, you don't think? No. No. Hmm. Kelly wanting to make sure that Team Canada will not have another go at that shot. This is good. Just a two. Line's good too. Two. Get ready to bring it two. up. And off for a, let it work. Okay, well, let it work. Get ready. Where? Two. Close it up a bit. You're gonna bring it a bit if you yeah, can. Yeah, just a two. Line's almost there. Yeah, both. Yep, yep. Yep. Hard. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nice shot, Kel. <clears throat> Nicely okay, done, Kel. Line on that. Good job. Way to go. Okay. Great shot, Kel was out there, but it came up easy. Yeah, they do. There's not those runs, I don't think, right now. Nope. It's kind of like middle 12 you'd get out and then they wouldn't come up. You know how many mm -hmm. wide guards we'd clip? Mine not. Okay. To there. What? Great little ice so read by okay. Kelly Scott, noticing Excuse the difference from okay. last night, that sometimes if you got out there, Maybe they would half. track for a Go while. Half. Hey, let's go. You've got Not it. Not so much yeah. today. This is about blasting this front. I think we play the double PO. Yeah. And it leaves me maybe two options on my last. Yep. We're going across the face of the red. The tight red. Red onto red. She wants to open up both yeah. sides. Yes. Bringing the Kelly Scott will only be able to block one, but you can see that outturn side, that shot stone is partially exposed, except for any play on it, it goes directly onto her own. Needs to open the front. Yep. So now for the second end in a row here, Team Canada, Amber Holland. Yep. Yep. Trying to play magician, get out of some trouble. Runs the yellow back onto red, and what a wow. shot as Team Canada <laughs> now lies to Barry. Amazing stuff from Amber Holland. Now yeah, that is a huge game saver, not the called shot. But holy smokes. You talk about needing a break, Kathy, in a game, and they finally got one. It just seems that it's just taking off. Spilled everything. It did it over curled for what she wanted. <laughs> okay. Gets the nose. If she doesn't make that shot, Brian, she's still closed <laughs> down that side of the house. Yeah, oh. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> I don't know if that was elation or just what it was, but uh, they're thankful now to finally have some life in this game. Well, Amber's a good enough player to know that that was not the called shot. It's not pooled. You don't have to call them. What happens, happens. But, wow, talk about turning the fortunes of Team Canada in this end around and tough for this woman as she sits in the hack because you were all set up the player was going to nose a guard and all of a sudden you're now facing two completely buried it's got lots right now nine right now nine, nine right off. now off 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 no Kelly Scott with a little rub and talk about a change of momentum, not only in an end, but an entire game. They look for sure that Kelly Scott would be forcing the issue with the steal, and now it's Amber Holland with a draw for three. Alrighty. So you need four. <coughs> yeah. yeah. 
Is this a little bit more ice than it's, you were giving yes, other? Yes. Okay. Still thinking 13 eighths, pretty close, Amber. Let's you got go. it. Let's go. Kathy, you've watched a ton of curling. You've played a ton of curling. Do you remember two ends like this? The dynamic of it? It's uh, it is very bizarre. There's been so many out there right now. Uh, struggles with time. weight Good and boy. reading stones and. Running. For Amber Holland, Running she's a been a one-man wrecking crew, and, and she gets the credit for getting her team out of trouble, even Starting though it was now. not the called You're shot. But all of a sudden, she's drawing for three now. here. Oh. Crazy. This one's starting to break. Lovely weight. And beautiful weight. What a turnaround for Team Canada. Amber Holland finds the forefoot, picks up three. And after five, we've got a 4-4 four, four game here at Red Deer. The 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by M&M Meat Shops. Hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. Welcome back to Red Deer. A look at Team BC. Boy, trying to come back after a bit of an emotional fourth, fifth end. Let's take a look at the numbers after five. It's brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's time for Tim's. Well, I think if I'm going to be really blunt here. I think the scores are being very generous. It has not been a very well-played game till this point. Lots and lots of hits and lots and lots of rollouts. When I take a look at the key positions at third, both thirds, BC's at 65%. Team Canada's at 50. That has been the struggles. And struggles for Team Canada, surprisingly, they're all tied up. Brian is with Amber. Kathy, thank you very much. Uh, Amber, first off, just thoughts on that fourth end. Do you remember an end that your team has played like that before? <laughs> yeah, a few actually. <laughs> um, yeah, we just didn't execute very well and uh, just not throwing them as crisp and clean as we need to. So we'll try to clean that up for the last half. And that shot in the fifth, you make the run back, you stick for two. You're, what's going through your mind at that point? Well, I really, that wasn't even the shot that I called. I knew it was there, um, leaving it maybe for my last one if I didn't make my first. But I uh, made it and, you know, made the draw for the three so tied we're happy momentum maybe on your side now after something like this happens in a game sure it gives you a little bit of life gives especially when you haven't been executing very well and now you put a score on the board that gets you back into it so yeah you know we're pretty excited to be tied at this point <laughs> amber thanks for this thanks that is amber holland of team canada as they fight back here and pick up three in the fifth tied up at four back to red here after this the 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? By Ford, official automotive partner of the Canadian Curling Association. And by World Financial Group, proud to be a sponsor of the Season of Champions. Your dreams, our strategies. One other game on the ice this morning in Red Deer. It's featuring Ontario and Alberta. And this young team out of Ontario, skipped by Tracy Horgan, Jennifer Seabrook, Jenna Inge, and Amanda Gates out of Sudbury. They may be Scotty's rookies, but they've come to play facing Heather Nettowin, and Team Alberta, and watch this delicate touch shot here with her final stone. Well, it's really tough because there's not a lot of separation between the two stones, and for her to stick around, she has to hit it at such an angle that it doesn't touch that back one. Good enough for the deuce. Grazes it a bit, but yeah, picks up two. So Alberta still leading 4-3. But a bit of a comeback story over there as well. And as for our feature game, wow. What a fifth end and what a turnaround. 4-4 here. BC has the hammer back, but I don't think anyone, including Amber Holland, even saw this coming as she made her first, stuck it, draw in for three. And I don't know if you've been a part of a game like this before, Kathy, but momentum is such a big thing. And you have to think maybe... That's exactly what Team Canada needed. And now you got to think, what is Kelly Scott thinking after something like that? Well, the only thing that was really great about that for Team BC was that it happened right before the fifth end break. And so the conversations in those huddles by the coaches would have been very different. But they would have had a common theme. And both coaches would have been saying to the players, you are better than this. You need to think about what you're doing. You need to go to the target with the right weight. That's why you're not executing as you should be at this point and for team bc it's about parking that they know that that was 
a fortunate break for Team Canada. They need to remind themselves that they're tied up with Last Rock. And for Team Canada, I love, love the honesty of Amber when you talk to her and you said, have you ever seen something, your team play like that? And she said, yeah, actually I have. <laughs> and that's been the story of yep. the year for her. So she's very honest about it. She knows yeah, she was it. fortunate. So she would have been Heart, saying to her Heart. team, I can't be doing Heart, this. You gotta help me. That's a pretty good start. Stone, top four, partially buried. Good weight. Kelly's looking for hack weight this time. They played a little bit more last time, and it didn't have that finish that they were hoping for. So she's asking Sherry on this one to throw a little bit less to go down to hack from bumper. Hack, just clean. Just to get that little bit of just movement. Off. Just yeah. hack. Off. Yeah. Goes. Hard, hard, hard. And Siebertson yeah, and Armstrong can't really hold it. Great throw. And the shooter will spin out the back. A oh, good throw by Sherry. There is a break point. Go, and they found the difference between the first one that ran Dark straight and that one. You could good. see it moving very hard towards that center line. For sure. And some not very good numbers for Kim, and I don't think they're being harsh on her. She's really had a struggle right. so far today, and it's pretty remarkable when your third's at 50% that you're tied up, and that's one of those things, a combination of some great shot making by Amber and a bit of a fortunate twist to last in. She is a much, much better player than those numbers, and she knows that. Wait. Nicely done. There's a four for you. Four, four, six. How do they grade the scoring, Kathy, when it comes to these percentages? Well, it's out of four, and so the intended shot was a guard of the stone, and so that would be viewed as a four. And where it gets a little bit dicey, I would really love to see what they gave Amber on her bang, bang, bang up yeah, with the right shot. Yeah, um, because. The intended shot was a double peel, and yet the outcome was better than the double peel. And so it is extremely subjective. They do very much try to work at a scoring system, and often they'll have an extra person that will help the person that is scoring because it is so subjective. But it really is not based on the outcome of the shot. It's based on what the shot is that is called. Way to go. There you see Daylene cleaning up shop a little bit. Let's go. Kim, come back. Wait. Less. Wait. 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 
coming down. Bet. No, no, no. Okay. Fine, Cam. Ah. Okay. Eight, eight. I'll let them off the hook a little bit. Yeah. For Kim, had thrown the guard on the first, was trying to do the second, but it slid a little bit. And so that takes the advantage over to Daylene. A chance for the double. Things this end not working out particularly well for BC. Would be very comfortable with blanking this and moving forward to the seventh and seeing what happens there. Good shot, Daylene. That's fine. Shoot. Good shot. Well, we're at the home of the Red Deer Rebels, and a lot of great NHL players have come out of this building. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, we talked about, Cam Ward, Dion Phaneuf, Chris Versteeg, Marty Erat. I doubt those guys are going anywhere. But a reminder, we do have Trade Center for you, and it'll come your way on Canada's sports leader. All-day coverage for you. Okay, nine and a half. Yeah. Just a little cool. And, of course, Just all eyes will be on TSN next Monday because... Usually a lot of right? wheeling and yeah. dealing, and it's the time of the season where teams make a push or teams become sellers, and we'll be watching closely. Talk about this being the home of Nugent Hopkins. My son Jacques and I were up in Edmonton last summer and had a chance to watch him play. He's, it's marvelous, just incredibly, incredibly good, and how cool to be in a building where he came from. Okay. Got to be careful though in Red Deer country talking too much about the Oilers because the Flames fans aren't far off either. I don't know in Red Deer where the allegiance is. Well, it's interesting. I had a driver one day that was saying that you know you have to be you have to be very careful because people are very very. It's very much like the Ottawa Toronto rivalry. It doesn't matter what province you're from. In Winnipeg, we have the Jets and nothing else. Counts. I think so too. Kelly Scott has done a good job today, in my opinion, of sticking to what got her so much success in the past. It is a simpler game. Rolls just a little bit too far. Would love to have even, if it wasn't perfectly buried, be half behind. Now the call on and off. You know you're close as a sweeper when you hear yeah. that, but it just continues to finish. Yeah. Hard to call. I know. Yeah, like knows at the hard line, but then yeah. they just finish and then fly right off. Yeah, them. exactly. The roll is big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought we had a good one there, but it just kept going. You were good. You got this. Let's go. Well, Kathy, she's been a magician the last couple of ends here. Amber Holland certainly keeping her Team Canada alive here against British Columbia. Tied up at four here in the sixth end. Amber Holland without hammer here, her final stone. She is very, very consistent. And now the potential blank here for Kelly Scott. Talk about consistency. Kelly Scott, certainly an amazing story when it comes to coming out of British Columbia. Third straight provincial title, seventh trip to the Scotties in the last eight years. Kind of a mirror image of another Howard that we know out of Ontario who just continues to keep coming out of Ontario and competing in those briars. And of course, this year we'll be off to Saskatoon. We will. Well, for Kelly, this shot is not just a simple peel. There are two stones just out of play or out of the rings, but still in play at yes. the back of the house. So you do have hard. to take care hard. about how you peel this hard. out. Hard. 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 Right to it. 
Armstrong Fraser on it. Jam at the back, but she will pick up the single point. So Canada with Hammer back when we return to Red here. Her last Scotty's appearance was 2008 in her home province of Saskatchewan. However, for Michelle Englot, it is a tournament she remembers for sadness. On the day before draw one, Michelle's father, Joe, passed away very suddenly from a heart attack. But one of his last wishes was that his daughter carry on and play in the Scotties, and somehow Michelle Englot did just that. She went on to skip all 11 games for Team Saskatchewan, and in between draws, she attended a wake and the funeral for the man who taught her how to curl. The strength she showed during those seven days was, in a word, remarkable. This year's Scotty should be a lot easier for Michelle. She doesn't have the pressure of being the home team, but she will certainly have a lot of people cheering her on here in Red Deer and somewhere. Joe Englot will be one of them. What a powerful story there, and you can watch Michelle as she'll take on Kim Dolan today at 3.30 Eastern time. Michelle, a pretty incredible story. Became the first skip to win Provincial Scotties in four different decades, and they went perfect through Provincials in Saskatchewan this season, beating Stephanie Lawton in the finals. We look forward to watching her, and we look forward to the conclusion of our feature game this morning as Kelly Scott attempting to blank in that last end. She would hit and stick, pick up the single. So it is 5-4 BC here in the Seventh end of play as Aberholland has the hammer back for Team Canada. Move a little. Stay close, though. Vine's great. We've got to be there. Oh, 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 we're bouncing. And we've had a close eye over on Sheet B right next door. The other game in action on this Monday morning here at the Centrium in Red Deer. Ontario down one to Alberta. 4-3 to score. Sixth end. Heather Nedowin settling into the hack. Final stone. She has one on the button. And she basically needs to touch that rock for a chance at her two, Kathy. It's really tough. Tracy Horgan did a good job of closing down the other side of the house, the other turn. She needs to get to the face of it, but it has to overcurl once it goes by those guards. Tough shot. Jessica Marin. Lane Peters on the brush, and it just won't curl enough for them. Her weight's pretty good. Tough shot, so they will get the single. And Ontario staying in this thing. Down 5-3, but they have the hammer now as they'll begin play in seven. There you go, Timmy. That 80 is still good. It'll cross more. And we're trying to utilize those red stones belonging to BC in the house to generate a couple of points this end. It's tougher to do sometimes than when you have guards up but you have to deal with what you've got and what she's got is two stones in the house mine's really good mine's really good yellow for line hard line hard line hard line hard line hard line hard line 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 whoa 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 nice weight Tammy great weight that's fine sorry Emma good weight Here's another look, Kathy, at the sweeping, and we talked about this is the one thing that they had improved on and wanting to work on. And I know we've talked about it, and Russ had mentioned it too in the other telecast that the sweeping for the women's game has come a long, long way. It, it definitely has. You know what? Uh, sweeping just generally has come a long way, in my opinion. I think there is such a realization that it can make the difference. It can make shots for so many skips. Murph Fonger. A uh, long, long, long time coach back to 92 when uh, they won, they being Amber at the time, had won the juniors. And we spent some time in Europe because I was part of Team Canada at that time. And just uh, such a dedicated gentleman to, to Amber and what she's interested in doing. And he's always looking for ways to advance the team and really felt that their, their sweeping was fine. But fine's not good enough, and it is tougher to stay on top than it is to get there. And so this team got to the top last year, and they started to take a look at what it is that they needed to improve, and sweeping was an area. Mine's really good. Go! 
And so they've done that. They've switched positions. They've changed stance from open to closed in some cases. Adjusted where their body weight is. You can see Heather's head directly over the broom head. That's the maximum pressure that she's going to be able to apply. Those are good things. A little shoot there under her breath. Very, um, it is a craft. As a, as a front end player for a very long time, you take great pride in judging stones right. And she's a little disappointed they didn't make the freeze. Nine even, keep our shooter. Let's go eight eight. It's fine to go early. As you look at Kelly Scott, and of course, longtime teammate Sasha Carter that she's played with. Sasha, unfortunately, under the weather, and they've had to alter things. But that's the one thing Kelly had said too that that comfort level of having Sasha play with her and sweep her rocks and judge them for so many years. And that was one of the reasons that Sievertson also would hold the broom in the house because she just loved the fact that Sasha knew how she throws the rocks and is so comfortable with her judging them. We talk so much about the relationship between skips and thirds, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You look at a team like Manitoba, Joel Officer, Jennifer Jones, been together forever, a very long time. There is a trust there that you... You know that that other person has seen you at your best and seen you at your worst and that they're going to be there for you. Those are really important things on a team. And so for Kelly Scott, she knows that Sash is going to be there for her, not only in terms of her sweeping, but any kind of mental or emotional pickup that Kelly Nine. needs. That's what Sasha does. Go with a little tap to the back one. Okay, stay close then. Not coming down Lean. a bit. Whoa. Still to that back one with a tap. Okay. Well, just too much weight, and okay. we saw Kelly Scott throw that draw in five in the same path, and it ran straight for a long time before it took its hook. Just too much weight. Okay. What was that? I got a 69. 69. Referring yeah, to back that's line. That's what I was thinking. To hog line, they're throwing anywhere from 3.9 to almost 4.0, so a 69 would definitely be heavy. We have two reds there, though. Yeah. Pretty close in though. Top 12, top eight. Yeah. So BC lies three for now, just to follow up on the, the Sasha story as well. Sorry, Actually, in her sit down, Kelly had said their 21st daughter, yeah. anniversary of playing together, which is a long, long time. Not bad. I'd rather Sorry. that than a short. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to make Good sure job. out there. Started a long time ago in Manitoba. Represented the province in juniors before she uh, and way. Sasha bailed for a better same climate. Way, perfect. <laughs> Great chance here. She's had some struggles today, but for Kim, if she's able to make this freeze, that last Hard stone line. by Daylene coming in We're too deep. Hard line. No, whoa, whoa. Rim. We're good. We're whoa. good. Yep. Whoa. Hard line. Rim. Yep. Yep. Line. Just a little tap. Rim. No. no. Rim. We're bouncing. Get up. Okay, Kim. Kim. Good. Locks are right on there. It looks to be shot stone. Yeah, I would agree with you. I should call you guys. <laughs> I might put that in my diary. It'll be the first time this week. <laughs> and the last. Not sure what uh, they're like, yeah, it's, it is, and then it's tapping, and I'm like, I don't know what to call for line anymore. It's an interesting comment. Okay, Just the, the struggles at reading rocks today, very uncharacteristic of 
Team Canada, and you hear Amber say she's just not sure what to call because she's getting fed so much information, and it's great to get information, but it's so inconsistent. They, it starts out with need to go, and then it's a nine, so they're saying they need to go to get it to the house, and a second later, they're saying it's going through the house, and so for the person reading what the rock will do, that's really tough. Pick that shot stone out. Oh, wait a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Big wait yeah. here from Kelly Scott. Really hard. Back yellow too, guys. Bangs them up, nice. spills the yellow. Great shot, Cal. And there it is, BC line three. Great shot, Cal. Well, she saw that all the way. You heard her halfway down, making sure that it caught the back yellow as well. Great shot, Cal. That's that out to you on that guy, hey? Yeah, it's so okay. Much. Yeah, yeah. I know we were waiting to have a piece to make sure it got it, enough yeah. to get it out. To come up. Yeah. Let's throw. Well, she's changing turns here now. Fire box, huh? Okay. Let's go. Amber electing to go with the out turn on this shot. The only challenge with the intern, even though they've thrown it as much, is it really is the one path that we've seen that will run for quite some time before it makes its break. And there's a red PC stone in the eight, but I don't know that she could get by. Schneider and Gallenschuk putting that sweeping to the test here. And they drag it in, it's and it's good enough for third shot, it looks like, but not quite far enough. Ooh, okay. Just kick light on you. Yeah. Good sweeping. I thought we could get it there for a second. Shoot. Light. I'd rather be open than That's what uh, I like. over curl, right? You tuck around it. Yeah. Yeah. Top four doesn't kill us either. I think we could really drag them here, Cal. Just want to tuck a little bit around. It's not important to be completely buried. In fact, if you five stick five. out a little bit and five, you only five. show her half, it's harder to get to the hearts. Do not want to be deep. Kelly Scott beating Marla Mallet 6-5 in her provincial final to make it here to Red Deer. Just a four. In pretty good shape here in the seventh end. Her final stone without hammer. Just top four. Just top four right now. Come on, tap it. It's coming in now. Can you finish it? Top button that hole. Come on, finish it. Mine's good. Top button now. Finish it. Finish it. Hard. They drag it in to get a piece. Didn't want to come in there, hey? Oh, and great green eight, throw. Like, great way. Cut it off with the top four or yeah. keep it going to tuck it. Great way. Okay. Well, if they stop sweeping that a little bit yeah. earlier, it's a lot then, tougher shot for Amber Holland. If you move that Sorry. stone up one foot, I know Kelly wanted it to tuck, but it wasn't tucking. That's where the person in the house, in this case, Daylene, if she calls them off and it stops biting the top of the four, Amber does not have this shot. Instead, she's got a hit. It's wide open for the single. Nine, seven, As we've seen so far in this game, nothing nine, has come easy go. for either team. No! Final stone. Stay close. Here in seven for Amber Holland. Needs to finish up, needs to curl a bit. Jams Good. in the back red, but the shooter does hang around. Amber Holland, Team Canada will pick up their single. We're all locked up at five here at Red Deer, Alberta.
make it great. They're having a great time with the Scotties so far, and as are we. Brian Mudrick, Kathy Goche with you on this Monday morning here in Red Deer. 5-5 to score in our feature game between Team Canada and British Columbia as Amber Holland made the hit to pick up her single with action now underway here in the eighth end. And British Columbia has the hammer back. In a really interesting game, Kathy, I mean, it had pretty much all the dynamics. We had some missed shots early on, huge momentum swing. Amber Holland really, if you want to call it the TSN turning point for sure in the match when she made that run back to stick, no question. sit to. It has been quite the game so far. Yeah, it really has. Uh, I think both teams will leave the ice kind of feeling like they've left something behind. Whoever loses is going to think of how many opportunities they had. And for the team that wins, they're still going to be thinking, yike. <laughs> they may hey, even hey, go straight hey. to the uh, to the yeah. patch as well <laughs> after this one. Now the bonus for both teams is neither plays this afternoon so they can both leave the building go back and regroup and have a chat. One other game on the ice this morning here at the Centrium and it features Ontario and Alberta 5-3 Alberta leading. It is Tracy Horgan though with hammer and she's looking i believe is it to play the blank here yeah Kathy? she is they spend a lot of time looking at whether that rock at the back was in or not and then they thought they might as well throw at it but yike so she flashes entirely is it a blank i believe they had to take another look at it decide if it was one i think they're going to take a measure and they did have a measurement and indeed it was a single point for Alberta. So now 6-3, Heather Nedewin with the advantage there. Heather comes in with a 1-2 and two record, Horgan at 2-1. and one. And Heather Nedewin easily could be 3-0. and oh. She lost two games on Last Rock spectacular shots. The first one in an extra end. And then last night we showed you that great double by Amber Holland to win. Have to remind yourself it's a long week. Just keep plugging away. Are we Amber. going here? I don't mind the hit and roll. I like the hit and roll, I think. You can get on. I like the Nine call as well. You want to get in front of that this yellow stone, ideally, but that Nine red rock yet, but this is, the four. is so uh, close. Okay. Fine. So you've got it. Awesome. I am talking about the four. That means that they've had a discussion and they feel that the number four rock that Tammy Nine. throws Nine. does something Nine. different. So whether they feel it curls more, Nine. curls less, Sharing that so she can ice appropriately. Go, Heather! Go, 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 go. Nice throw. It is big. <laughs> yeah. How big a thing? Nine. <laughs> Nine. Same weight. Nine. They move those stones around, but still it is two in the house for Team Canada. Let's use this, eh? Three. At this point, Kelly's not going to be too concerned oh, three, about yeah. those. Yeah, three. Yeah. three, right, Amber? Three. Yeah. Let's go. You got it. Okay. I got a 409 on yours. So 410 for sure for yeah. you. Mine's pretty good. Mine'll be nice. Two or half. 
Halfway to street. Hard. Okay. Easy on the line. Easy line. Easy on the girl. line. Let's okay. Get over okay. Girl. Okay. We're just halfway. Whoa. Sit. Oh. Okay. Sit. Sorry. Speakers Amber. off because they don't want to lose line. Well, it has been an up and down game, Kathy. It's time for the player comparisons as we look at the thirds. Well, at the fifth end break, we talked to you about these being the two lowest on the team, one at 69 and 50. Kim's brought her numbers up 11%. That's good. It's only the eighth end, so she's come a long way. But look at those hits, struggles. Uh, overthrowing, underthrowing, and in the case of Daylene, it's been the draw. She's had some chances to really put pressure against the opponent and has come short pretty consistently. Both of these ladies are way better than this. Clear comparisons brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Off. Get ready. Oh, oh, off. It's 10. No. Okay. No. And Siebert's in stone. Moves that yellow rock back 12. Yeah. It's really nice finesse through. weight. I like back line. Okay. Let's go, Kim. You got it. See Team Canada now lying three. That's good weight by Kim. It's exactly what she asked for. Amber ready to brush. She got a great low five from Amber after that. that a little bit of strut and confidence. Nice to see again. Fraser Armstrong go with all they got, but not enough as it wrecks on that guard. Okay. Well, Daylene just soft on her release coming out. They screamed right away. Watch when she comes out. Rock is set really well. And then here you can almost see her shoulder dropping as she sort of flips it in a little bit. Instead of releasing it at the 12 o'clock position, sort of does the ballet finish, I call it. Right there. And that had it going right out of her hand. Yeah. Right. Like then you'd have the six, maybe, or the. Yeah. Let's go. The top 12. Okay. And great on center line. Yeah. Show her a piece of this one's okay. Do you want it in? No, just a three. Six. Okay. You don't think she's going to play this out turn draw? But then you'll have the run. Yeah, just, yeah. Kay. And if she makes it real good, I can just freeze and Kay. force her one, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. It's 13.9 to T here. To a little tea. bit quicker, yeah. You got it. Let's go. Really good chance here for Team Canada to put some pressure. Kelly? Line's nice. Great. Just a two and a half. Line's fine. Out there, two and a half. Line's great. Three, we're three. Perfect. Right to my broom. Right oh, to my broom. Oh. 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 We're, we're all tough. the way in. That's okay. Sit. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Let's go. Nice wait. If you know this, she has to chase it. You like so that? then you're going to have this on your cool. next one. That's what I'm okay. thinking. All right. I think that's smarter. I think so. I'm going to go just an 11. Yeah. 
the other shot that they've got that they initially Eddie talked about is guy. do you like play this the problem is if you make this even if you make it perfectly and amber comes down and 11. hits her own yeah. yellowstone straight back onto yours you may not have a last shot so they're electing to play the hit now it right, will be shot back. which will force amber to play that hit and they're leaving that stone that that outside in shot draw for her last if she needs it If that yellow stone that she's hitting were not there, then the draw on the first shot's probably a good one because you can generate two. But even if you make it perfect, Just Amber Holland's got to yep. run. Yep. Yep. Kelly Scott, Sorry. her first here in the yep. eighth yep. end. Easy. Clean. Yep. Her Clean. turn to play magician yep. and try to get out of some trouble. Makes the tap, quiet little That's double. Awesome. And That's good, sits shot rock for now. Well, we're in the home of the Red Deer Rebels, also a place where Cam Ward once suited up. And the NHL on TSN tonight features Cam Ward and the Hurricanes taking on the Capitals, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Also available live on TSN Mobile TV. Let's get it, hey? There you go. Mission accomplished for BC. Will force Amber Holland to play the hit. Got it. There's lots of room to roll for Amber. Where's a perfect roll here, Kathy, for her? Oh, if she can roll this rock strike sideways into the four foot, half behind the stone in the 12 foot, half behind the center guard, really tough for Kelly Scott to get shot. Get ready, Tammy. If the roll wasn't there, Kathy, do you maybe want to get on that early and roll it the other way and then force her to make the draw? Now she possibly has an open hit. Yeah, you thing, you yeah. could. Uh, you're thinking like rolling out all together. Yeah, if you weren't going to get the perfect roll, then you force her to at least draw around that one guard that's... It's you, in tight, top 12, but the one yellow stone. I think you're always more comfortable lying three and forcing your opponent to shoot against three. Okay, top. If you roll out, all Kelly has to do is draw half of the eight foot for her point. And she's a, known as a very good drawer. She's very comfortable. She's made a lot of draws today. So forcing her to shoot against three, I think, is comfortable game plan for Team Canada. Calling clean for sweepers as Kelly Scott, final stone here in eight. She'll hit and stick and pick up her single. As this close battle continues between two former champions. More from Red here after this. Time now for the m and Meat Shop's final end challenge. After the game, go to www.finalend.ca. Enter the secret word for a chance to win a trip for two to see the 2013 World Junior Championships in Sochi, Russia, home of the 2014 Olympic Winter Games. The first 100 entries will have a chance to win a $50 M&M gift card. All participants get an M&M discount, and we will tell you what the secret word for today is shortly in the broadcast. In the meantime, an update for you over on Sheet B, the other matchup this morning between Ontario and Alberta. And the final stone here for Tracy Horgan. Well, she's facing three Alberta stones. Could have been four, but the team from Alberta had to hold off. All she's got is an angle bump on her own stone right to the hearts. This young team from Sudbury, all rookies here, all taking part in their first Scotties. Off to a great start, tries a little rub. And it's not quite enough, so looks like two there for Team Alberta. And Heather Nedewin looks like she's well on her way to picking up win number two of this year's Scotties, 8-3, Alberta, after eight. And our feature matchup this morning on Sheet C, British Columbia, Team Canada, 
in quite the contest so far. We've had some ups, some downs, some missed shots, some outstanding shot making, and a close game. 6-5, BC the advantage with action underway here in nine. Now Team Canada sliding in on that corner guard, and so that makes it pretty easy for BC in terms of decision-making for Sherry Fraser here, although you can be pretty confident that Amber Holland won't be overly worried if nothing materializes here. Wouldn't mind having Last Rock advantage coming home. Soft handle. Good, Sherry. Ten, hey? Oh, I didn't get Here it. Here we go, Tammy. Let's go, Tim. Clean. Easy, Kim. Easy, Kim. Clean. No. The shooter sticks around. Wide open. We'll continue to stick around. Great. Kathy, what did you always prefer when you were competing? Did you like to be down with hammer in this position, or did you prefer to maybe have that hammer coming home? Obviously, a lot of teams want hammer coming home. Yes. But what did you, what situation or scenario did you enjoy playing out the best? Up six. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Tips. But it's, <laughs> you know what? It is. There is something very empowering of having last rock. And there's that huge debate. You know, one down, without, or 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 one up. Sorry, without or one down with. So many people would like. I heard Russ saying last night he'd like to be up. For for me, I would rather be down one and have last rock because you feel in control of your destiny. You know that you should be able to create a situation in which you can tie it in the worst case scenario and you can take some risks and with the free guard zone get some stones in play and generate your two and you should be able to generate your two so last rock is always great and that's why i think you're going to have amber holland very comfortable running things here and not trying to force any issue by throwing a corner guard Kelly's not particularly interested in forcing the issue either in this game. Another new face of the Scotties, Daleen Siebertson, her rookie debut. So with that rollout, Amber's asking Kim to come right in. Well, and it's interesting. Kelly, of course, has worn that jacket with that maple leaf. And I've wondered often this morning how many times she's looked at Amber's back and wanted to say to her, give me my jacket back. <laughs> it's true. Once you have that maple leaf on your back, which is the greatest honor that I've ever had, for sure. And I think that anybody that's ever represented Canada would say the same. It is really difficult. She can play any other team and look at any other provincial logo, but when you're staring at that leaf and you once had it, wait, it reminds you really how much you want it again. Kind of funny too, because Team Canada and talking with some of the players, just getting used to those red uniforms. I mean, you know Amber Holland for years and that Saskatchewan and 
see them in green all last year. Even they needed the adjustment, but they wouldn't trade it for anything. Not at all. It's very much like when you win your province the first time. I used to just look at my buffalo and pat it. It was wonderful. <laughs> Scott, her first here in nine. Nice Takes that yellow nice go away. Well, mission almost accomplished for Amber in this ninth end. Nine and a half. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Right. Red and white. A little bit of deja vu from the third end. This is the same way that it set up. Kelly Scott threw it into the forefoot, and the blank attempt was stuck by Amber Holland. And so Kelly hoping to create that exact same scenario. Kathy, depending on the team that you're taking on, do you go in with a strategy for every situation, whether you're down one, with down one without do you before an event like this take into account what you do where you'd set the rocks up or does that vary from game to game or team to team teams generally have a game plan and they play the same if they're one up they're one down those are scenarios that you have played a number of times you've played with and perhaps have changed during the course of your year when you find out what your comfort zone is just like we talked about brian whether you feel more comfortable being one up go, without or one down it would be very unusual to change that, but there certainly are circumstances. If you're playing a team that's really struggling, a skip that's struggling with one turn, you can okay. um, yeah. alter Let's that go. game plan. But that's a discussion the team has between ends. This, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, it felt good. Stone, and yes, we do have the blank. So now we do know the situation. Team Canada retains that hammer, and they are down one. Coming home here in 10. Thanks. Well, an update on the Eminem Meat Shop's final end challenge. The secret word is hack. So you can go to www.finalend.ca and enter the secret word for a chance to win a trip for two to see the 2013 World Junior Curling Championship in Sochi, Russia. That's home of the 2014 Olympic Winter Games. The first 100 entries will have a chance to win a $50 M&M gift card. And all participants get an M&M discount as well. As we bring you back inside the Centrium. 6-5, BC the advantage as we come home in 10, leading Team Canada, but Amber Holland does have the hammer on this Monday morning at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Good, good, Heather. Well, a great first stone by BC, placed exactly as where you would like it to be, a good corner guard. For Amber Holland, 27% of the time she has been successful in scoring multi-points when she has last rock. Multi-points, of course, is what she needs to win this game out right here in 10. Keep that coming for line. 
Okay, just clean Ten now. To a three. Just clean. Get ready. We need a piece of center, guys. Real tight. Okay. Right, we're good enough for line. Beauties, Jack. Okay. Very nice. You feel good about her too, the Sam? Still 90 to get there? I think so, Heather. I think 90 is good. Put it there. Heather Kalinchuk. Mine's pretty good. Lead for Team Canada. Her four. Go then. You can move a bit. We're to it. To it. Go. We gotta go soon. Mine's good. Mine's fine. Go if you have to. Go. Line yeah, a little for line. Right frozen. Shot Heather. Got a girl. Nice shot. Very nice. And coming into action this morning, Ontario was two and one. Tracy Horgan out of Sudbury, but a tough game this morning against Alberta and Heather Nedowin. Final stone for Horgan. No real opportunities for a deuce here. There is a red stone in the house, but no real double off of those two yellows. So this is a draw for one. Needs eight foot. They haven't touched that at all. Has a little bit of backing, two. and we'll Tie need it. Lots. And looks like a single. Okay. No, just a two. Two. Just so it'll be two. eight four for I Team Alberta. And Edwin will have Hammer coming home in 10. Easy, you're two gotta, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta go, line. Gotta go, gotta go. Okay, whoa, whoa for we, whoa. Way to go, Sherry. And you hear the applause, and that means it is actually handshake. So it is Heather and Edwin, the home province favorite. Fans certainly on her side. Round of applause as they win 8-4 over Tracy Horgan. Oregon falling to two and two, and Nettowood improving to two and two at this year's Scotties. Back in our feature game, Tammy Schneider being asked to play the peel and clear some red off the top, removes one. All right. So after this morning, only one team will still be undefeated, and that will be decided with our feature matchup. Team Canada, British Columbia, and there you see Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Yukon Northwest Territories, Quebec, Alberta, all with two victories thus far. Crowd paying some tribute to Heather and her Alberta foursome as they make their way back to the home end. Some pretty good numbers too. Lane Peters, 94%, Jessica Mayer, 89%. Beth was 85 and Heather 79 percent. Kelly trying to stagger the guard so that there's no run back opportunity and she also doesn't want to create a situation like they just had where a double is really easy to remove both. Do you like this way? Yep. Nine. Let's go, Let's go Tammy. It's hard for the team from the other end to know how close that red stone is. They're wondering if you can hit, remove it, and roll in, Please. but it's at least a foot, yep. if yep. not more, in front. So this is a straight peel. Yep. Hard. Hard. Hard, Kim. You got to get it out of there. Opens up okay. the front a bit. Well, what they don't like is where that yellow one stopped. It took away any sort of angle to the button that they might have had off the other yellow, too. Is 10 enough? Oh, yeah. 10's Nine, good. 8, 10. Yeah, we got to keep the shooter, hey? Yeah. And now because Kelly can see all of that yellow stone, 
chance to make it go away. Keep things simple. If her opponent scores one, she's content to play this out to the 11th. And not enough to remove that Team Canada stone. 10-7. And an opportunity now for Amber Holland. 10-7, just under thrown a little okay. bit. Nodes isn't too bad, though. Doubles rolling out. I don't mind Nodes. Okay. okay. Nine and a half. Let's go, Kim. You got this, Kim. Shooter sticks around, so Team Canada, they need two to win. They lie too. Good sweep, Tom. Good brush. You wanted to make sure that it's stuck around. No, just maybe a hair soft. T line weight, top four. Now, game's on, game plan so changes. No chance okay. that you're going to hold your opponent at this point with those two in and so chance now for Daylene to get around that guard that was thrown earlier by Team BC. Scott urging Fraser and Armstrong all they got now. Drag it to that yellow stone. They bring it enough for shot stone as BC lies one. Wow, that over curls. <laughs> nice weight, great brushing. But the finish is so hard, it comes right past the guard out the other side into the open. Ten. Thinking ten. Play tight to that one. Tight to which on the yellow? Yeah. Well. Pro well, you can't overcut it though, right? No. You can't no. do this. Well, this like you can from here. here. Jam. Yeah. Could just peel the guard. Ten. Okay. You got it, Kim. And that was a nine and a half. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Kathy, I'm sitting right behind this sheet, and it is a tough little hole to sneak through. It is, the rocks are staggered, and so it does tend to run here a little bit. You have to flirt with those yellow stones on the outside. No! No! Close, whoa! Curl an Needs to curl up. Curl an inch. Okay, that's fine. Wobbled. Yeah, all right. Okay, that's it for you guys. Kelly's calling for a timeout. We'll ask for Jerry Richards. Sorry, I'm ready to fly very good, I was. Um, Unless then we she... go to here, come around to there, and then if she played a double, this is coming back to there. I think we have to come in again, don't we? Top four? Oh. With the guard. So oh if we God. go there, and then she hits something, yeah, we can't come in we're coming this she... way. Okay, so we don't like the guard, and you don't like coming around to there. I was thinking just the double would come that way. You don't like here, Cal? Get there. You don't like here? I'm not hating that guard. You are? Okay, so we play the guard, she double She's peels, then what? Then we then split. Then we've got here. the slash or the split. You like the guard? I like, I like the guard, but... 
She's got those yellows at This is just tricky to place this right That's That's crazy. You know, to make the easier shot, Yeah, because if you ever put it here... You like the guard, Jackie? I like the guard. What do you think? What do you like, Cal? I don't know. I think guard or this, I think. She just played this like it looks pretty easy for we her, guard. so that's She's why I like it. What, this? Yeah, and then hopefully and then we, we can follow her. If we play here, then yeah, she's hitting. Know, if we guard, it gives her a chance to maybe just hook yeah. one in. You like I'm kind of thinking here, she hits, okay. then you have a hit, and we're sitting too. Okay, so let's get way out there this way then. Because if she comes hey, around, that'll get us probably to there. Bit deeper, right? And, and then, then we can freeze sit. to her. Yeah. If she can still make the double think? then. Okay. Slash double. We're not playing the guard. If I'm here, she can still run that double. And it's hard to kind of be here. I think this is your ice. easiest. Guard? guard I, guess. <laughs> I like the guard too. Yeah. I don't hate it at all. I think it's your easiest shot. I think that'll get over. I think she could be even a little bit more, mm -hmm. hey? I, think I guess we're just doing the one, hey? Yeah, it's so, okay, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm not convinced that Kelly Scott's 100% confident with what is the right shot. There was a lot of discussion and a lot of concern. So the guard is to take away this hole. What they're really concerned about is the angle of these two. And if they were putting a stone in here, somewhere in here, and they make it perfect, and Amber uses that to run in, they don't want, they don't want to set things up for her. So it's not only what you make, it's what you leave. Here we go, Cal. The other options were to draw behind the T-line, but you have to be so perfect. And so what they're going to do is force Amber essentially into a draw game. When you play Hair that more. center, that guard just off to the wings, again, for Amber on her last stone, her option was to remove that guard. That is going to be one of the challenges for her, potentially. Kathy, is this one of those situations oh, maybe where Kelly tight. would lean on Sasha a little bit with all that decision-making there? Well, you know what? The Kelly rest. relied on, on Gina for so many years, and they had a great relationship. And one of the things that she said in working with Sasha and Daylene together with sort of being two different thirds, it's forcing her to make more decisions on her own. She thinks it'll make her a better player. Hard, 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 hard. As they'll drag it in. Great wait. And now we see BC line two, and that brings us, Kathy, to the game story. Well, there was chances for sure. Kelly Scott had that chance for four. Didn't materialize. We talk about that shot that Amber Holland made. It wasn't necessarily called according to the books, but it doesn't matter. It really worked out, and what a momentum shift. Her team was struggling at that point, seen some better numbers, and there's very little to choose between the two skips in terms of the shots that they've made today. That's why this game is so close. Game story brought to you by m and Meat Shops. Hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. I guess if I get it, I got to hit it thinner than that, and I'm losing this then. Like, I got to hit it real thin. And that's going past. Like here. Okay. Oh, now where? She's playing a draw on her first. You can see all of the redstone that was there initially. There you go. And from the hack, you're going to be able to see about a half. Yeah, that double is real thin. And well, we the double is very thin, and you jam on your own. But I, that's all the wrong angle. Okay. It is the wrong angle. And then angle. I'm getting real thin and probably ticking my other one out yeah. anyway. Yeah, okay. They all go. Let's go. So they're just T line. So, if you so can she needs to make a draw. Yeah. Too much. Uh, it might be a hair too much, but. Thirteen nine to T here. Okay. Like that ice? I'd take a hair less. Yeah. A little less. Let's go.
The defending champ, Amber Hall in her first rock. Here in 10, down by one All with you. Hammer. Ram right now. Ram. It's really good. You can wait a bit. Good. Hey, line's great. Yep. Ram. Line's good. All you. Yep. Line's tight. Line only. Line's Line. Line. Attacking. Line. Line. Hard line. We're bouncing. Line. Starting to throw a hard here. Schneider, Kalinchuk. Little rub off that redstone. Okay. And it will be shot, but wide open for Kelly Scott. <laughs> well, they were letting her know that it was going to be they tapping. They knew they, they had the right weight. They, they were just weren't. losing line. Or just been on it for line. Nose is good. I like that. Nose is great. You leave her the hearts and the hearts only. Now, despite that miss for Amber, though, that being said, at least she's been down the path. She threw the draw. She'll know the weight. And that has to give her a little bit of confidence, no matter what Kelly does here. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Nose hit is ideal. It's not completely open to her. You can see the distance Kinda from the line. Kind looks like a lot. <laughs> Once it gets close to that center line, though, do you like a little bit less? Um, I'll just maybe a little quieter weight. Have to be careful about changing from the hack. Things always look different from the other end. And Kelly's vantage point is usually the other end, which is where she set the broom initially. 11. No, no. Clean. No, no, no. 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 Off, off, off. No. Off, Kyle. Nothing yet. She's got a little piece. Good shot. Spills the yellow, but the forefoot available for Amber. Ah. Well, now she can look at the double because those rocks have moved. Well, and her concern was about the ice. She throws a lot of rotation, so her rocks will run relatively straight, and it took a long time to make its move to that center line. It's on the other side it starts to go. Does move nicely all the way. Enough weight to get that shot stone out. What do you like? Whatever you feel more comfortable with. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say it, that. <laughs> I think it's just under half a rock and it'll go. Okay. Have to play across the face. Yeah, because we're catching here, right? I think so. You can hit it under, under half. Like nine or peel. Whatever you like, Amber. Peel? Oh, probably peel. Just under half. Let's go. Needs I'll to hit it across the, the face this way so that there is no jam on the stone right here. We can peel. You like to call Kathy or do you prefer the drop? I'm going to pull a, uh, a Kim Schneider. It's, uh, it's such a subjective thing. She's playing this for the win. The draw is for the extra end. You need to get full forefoot, so it's not exactly easy. And Amber did this last night. She likes to play for the win rather than to go the extra. It's a very makeable shot. So here we go. Final stone oh, here in 10. Yes. A back and forth oh, game wow, between wow. two no, former champions. Needs one for extras. Needs two for the win. Double try, gets oh. one, but misses the second stone. Kelly Scott in British Columbia steals a win here in Red Deer. Well, Kathy, what an up and down game of momentum, momentum swings, a few bad shots, a few great shots. 7-5, BC remains perfect, Canada suffering. Their first loss this year. Back to Red Deer right after this. The 2012 Scotties Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Scotties. Proud supporter of women's curling for over 30 years. A big win and big hugs for... BC's Jackie Armstrong lead for Kelly Scott as they pull off a victory and remain perfect. 
against Team Canada. It was an up and down game. That run back Amber Hall had made in five to pick up three, certainly a turning point, but it wasn't enough as BC continued to battle and hangs on for a 7-5 win. And they continue to be perfect as we check out the standings. British Columbia now the only team without a loss at 4-0. Team Canada dropping to 3-1. Manitoba, Saskatchewan at 2-1. Ontario losing this morning as well in their game against Alberta. So they are 2-2. Alberta moving up to 2-2. Two and, two. and last year's bronze medalist, Nova Scotia at 0-3. Still looking for win number one. It's Monday morning here at the Scotties in Red Deer. More coverage right after this. Stick around. The 2012 Scotties Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Canadian Curling Association. By M&M Meat Shops, hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. And by Tim Horton's new lattes made with premium espresso. A couple of Scotty's veterans going head-to-head -head this afternoon on TSN Draw 7, Kim Dolan. Last time she skipped her own team at a national championship was back in 1992, but she is back at 1-3, facing Michelle Englott, who's been here before as well. Her record at 2-1, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time later on today on TSN. It's been a lot of fun so far at the Scotty's. Some great shots, some misses, some heartbreak. But at this point, just one team that is still perfect, and that would be Kelly Scott. On behalf of Kathy Goche, myself, and the entire crew, thank you for watching Canada Sports Leader, TSN.